Hey guys, I'm Andre. I'm Ailton. I'm Tristan. And this is ATV. Now we're gonna get onto uh, out of the kingdoms and get into, but still more of a world of remnants that are left. We still just we have a couple left to go with these. It's technically and still more about the kingdoms, but more. Sort of. Uh, it's not. It's not really about the people and the place, but more the action. I guess. Yeah, well, this one is gonna be the uh, between the kingdoms. And we're gonna see because we learned all about the kingdom. And let's see what goes on between them. around them <laughs> in between. Them. Pretty much what the titles. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. let's get in. So now you know more about the kingdoms, but. What's between the big cities? Between? All right, the easy answer is Rim. There's no reason to beat around the bush. They're out there, and it probably won't go well if you run into one. That's okay, because you're a huntsman. Or huntress. And you've trained at one of the major academies, so you're probably fine. Just don't get yourself overrun by a pack of them. Now, after a long day of killing Grimm and saving the world, you're going to probably want to stop at a small town inn. Small villages dot the land between the major cities. You might ask, with the wilderness being so dangerous, why not just live in the big cities? Well, that life isn't meant for everyone. These small towns are founded by people that have a problem with the kingdoms, or don't want to deal with the kingdom's problems, or maybe just enjoy the simpler life and would rather take their chances in the wild than in a kingdom. It goes well, about as well as you'd think. If the founders are smart, then there's a good chance these towns can survive for the same reason the kingdoms continue to. Natural barriers, strong defenses, and stubborn citizens. If you don't have at least a few of those, then you know, the chances of a town lasting more than a year isn't great. Unfortunately, it's not just the Grim running around ruining towns. Bandits. Wandering bandits are another threat. Oh, These groups of usually the skilled bad guys. travel the lands, He's never rocking. settling in one place. <laughs> they often prey on convoys, sending goods between kingdoms. That's not all. These raiders will often wait for a town to be at its weakest, maybe after a grim attack or while its fighters are out hunting, before finally moving in at night and striking. Bunch of jerks. The worst part is, if the grim hadn't attacked before, you'd better be damn sure they will now. And you can't exactly have bandits raid your town without at least a few negative emotions. This is also why bandits never stay in the towns they conquer. With attitudes like the ones they have, Grimm tend to be pretty interested in them as well. As long as they keep moving, they've got a better chance of survival. Besides these small towns, the areas between kingdoms really depend on the continent. Harsh deserts, icy tundras, lush forests, you name it. At this point, pretty much every inch of remnant has been mapped out. Although there are some areas that no one's gone into and come out alive. What? Of course, somewhere out there is where she is. Space. Yeah. <laughs> That's what a lot of people are saying. I... She's on the moon. Oh my gosh, she's on the moon. I mean, where she it looked like she was wasn't didn't even look like her. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the sky was all like black. And, uh, it looked like the atmosphere and sort of lava things that Grim were coming out. But yeah, we don't know where she is. But yeah, it's just it's technically what you would assume. It's like in a world with monsters like that, between the kingdoms are just monsters and killing people. Yeah. Monsters and bandits. Typical, typical. But obviously, Rocky. obviously, you are. I think honestly, it, it really does seem like the place that they're talking about is that dragon play, because there's nothing in all the places. Even when he was showing where all the places were, mm. that dragon 
content or whatever didn't yeah. seem to be touched. You mean the one over in the top yeah, the left? That's like kind of like a dragon. Yeah. Fat dragon. Maybe that's where all the Grimm comes from. You never know. Uh, maybe that's where she is. Or maybe that's where someone, something else is because... Another literally, cause kingdom. Literally, obviously, it's the thing of a... Uh, he doesn't have anything in there and he said that there's some places people went that had never returned but they also said that they'd map almost everywhere of Remnant. the Fire already. Nation. <laughs> Until the Fire Nation attacked. That, that they've mapped it already, like every place that's been yeah. seen, just some people haven't come back alive from. So it makes you wonder, why isn't there anything up there then? Yeah, why is there no cave but or anything if they, up there? But if they have been up there, then is that is the... The woman Maybe up there? It's just a giant mountain in the shape of a dragon. What was the bottom one? Is that the bottom one is, is a... Um, back... Not back to no. uh, uh, Will that be in another video explaining it? I don't know. It, <laughs> it, it, will, be, it will be put into a... I don't know if it will be put into a... I just wanna... Like, he already said it though, but... Yeah, he said that. It's on the first one, the veil. Do we faunuses? No. Uh... Well, we'll see, because it's... This one talks about fawn. It's, it's a spoiler, I think. <laughs> so let's see if it's in there. If it's What's what is it? Next one? I'm not sure. Anyway. But yeah, like, I can't believe I forgot the name of it, though. Yeah. Well, we'll probably I've seen it really so many times. <sighs> yeah, well, okay. So, so we're going to get into the next video. Oh, yeah, which we thought was. <laughs> okay, let's so get into I it. I think it's this one, which it should tell you us what the place is called. Right. I remembered it now. I remember oh, what it's called no, right no. before we watched it. Okay, go. We'll still just watch it and he'll, he'll say something. I'm gonna see how to pr pronounce this. It's Faunus. 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 It's a Faunus. Faunus. Wow. You know, most of us spend a lot of time talking about mankind versus Grimm, but. Technically, there is a third party in the mix. There is. The Faunus. Uh, animal. In case mm -hmm. you're not in the know, the Faunus are a species on Remnant that appear to be human in just about every way. Every way but one. Each Faunus has a single animalistic trait. Some more apparent than others. Ram horns, tiger claws, cat ears. Uh, I swear on my huntsman's license. I once saw a guy regrow his severed lizard tail. I swear, no amount of drinking can make you forget that pretty picture. <laughs> as far as everyone's aware, Faunus have been around as long as mankind, if not a little longer. History gets a little fuzzy past a certain point. But we do know that their kind and ours are completely compatible from a uh, biological standpoint. <laughs> so interbreeding? You can have Take sex. Two wolf yes! You get a <laughs> little wolf wife cush. Is real. Blake, a wolf heck yeah! Us and a human also typically means your little bundle of joys teething phase could get a little dicey. But if you take a wolf faunus and a bull faunus, for example, it's a complete roll of the dice. For all you know, you could be cleaning up your son's shedded snake skin. Oh, well. <sighs> Scientists are still scratching their heads when it comes to, so well, a lot about man. the faunus. But science isn't the real problem. It's how we all get along. Or, in this case, how we don't. Okay. Early man was scared to death of the faunus. And honestly, it's not too hard to sympathize with that. Seeing something that looks like you and acts like you walk out of the forest and reveal a pair of fangs can be a little upsetting. Like most things man doesn't understand, all sorts of rumors and stories surround the faunus. People avoided them like the plague, pushing them out of settlements and sometimes you know, even hunting them down. Man began to outnumber the faunus, and the faunus began to consider man nothing more than a hostile species. <laughs> Can't really blame them. These clashes between species were unavoidable as land that was safe from the Grimm was in constant short supply. But it was the Grimm that finally brought humans and faunas together for the first time. A village in Sanus fell under attack, and the only reason anyone survived was because the humans and faunas united against their common enemy. It was a step in the right direction, but it didn't fix everything. Once humanity learned they weren't so different from the faunas, 
they still use those differences as an excuse to exploit and alienate them. The treatment of the Faunus differed around the world, and things wouldn't improve much for them until the Great War. Veil and Vacuo against Mantle and Mistral. A war unlike anyone had ever seen. Well, the when war. it was over, the world was desperate to find compromises that would ensure they'd never see the likes of it again. Faunus were awarded equal rights as citizens of Remnant, and as an apology, they were given an entire continent of their own to do with as they pleased. There were some that saw this as fair and just, but many saw it for what it really was. Slap in the face from a nation of sore losers. Kind of like so exile. menagerie was born. So, yeah. so just There's menagerie. still faunus all over the world, though the fair treatment they were promised varies in quality from place to place. But menagerie will always be their safe haven. Here's the thing, though you can only push and prod people so much before they reach a tipping point. And when you pack those people together, it just makes it all the easier for them to get organized and get even. Oh, White Fang. Of course. Yeah. Uh, a lot of info to take. So much world building. I like it. Yeah, well, okay, so to, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna reiterate the, what he said about the genes. Well, because that, I think we were talking yeah, about that. Point. Because of why furry wife is and stuff like that. Blake, the but, bay. <laughs> but uh, it's a whole thing of when uh, when a wolf like if there's two wolf faunuses, yeah. like a wolf faunus and a wolf faunus, when the, if they uh, have a child, it's a wolf. It's a wolf. Okay. It's gonna be a wolf faunus. But and if a human is if there's a human and a wolf faunus, yeah. and they have a baby, they'll still be a wolf faunus. They'll still it be the faunus. It'll be the dominant be trait. No, from what he said. It's uh, well, I can hear. If the dominant trait is a fawn, and yeah, fawn yeah, is yeah. the dominant trait, yeah. so it will be the same as the fawnest parent will be yeah. the same as the child. But there's also a thing of that if a snake fawnest yeah. or a frog or like a cat fawnest, a cat fawnest and a snake fawnest, if they have a child, it's a random draw. Like, like you, a, they can could get, be any other animal. It could be any animal. Like they oh, could wow. get a, a cat and a snake can make like a frog oh or anything gosh. like that. You never know. Which apparently it's just becomes random, which is weird. From the gene, the gene pool. So it makes me feel like garbage. What? Monty or whoever wrote, wrote oh, that. Oh, into furry stuff. No, that they've watched One Piece because it's similar to One oh, yeah, Piece yeah, yeah. Fishman. Like the fish man. Fishmans, and then there's also it's like very similar to fish carrot. <laughs> well, well, no, they're different. No, one, we don't really know how they work. Yeah. Uh, what are they called again? The. Um, Oh, uh, the Zo people. Uh, the, the, the Minx. The, the Minx. Minx. That's yeah. what they call you. Yeah, the Minx. We don't really understand how they work. But anyway, how they work. Yeah, I don't Ruby. know. One thing unlike and unlike One Piece, these at least have human traits. Yeah. While the Minx, like Karen, are. They look, they're, they're they're look they're like. They're basically they're... anthropomorphic animals. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, that's what they are. So it's like. They just they're these furries. Don't have one trait. <laughs> it's cause... way bigger furries than these furries. <laughs> if you're into that, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, so that's just how the, the DNA trait goes for faunuses. And yeah, and the place that it was that I remembered right before okay, it what was, is it? What is it called? was Menagerie. Menagerie. It was the place that is the bottom yeah. place. That is that the city or the whole continent? It's the whole no. continent. Menagerie. Which, which they got, which was given to them after the war, was just to be like, you people all go here. Yeah, because well, you deserve, you, 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 they, you The way they, they put it was like, that they can have their own con, like, continent to make like a country yeah and thing like that but obviously some, like oh for like take it. to good to good thing but obviously all like the kingdoms were it was just like let's get them away from us because they're dangerous too or like it's, or just if they don't like them because yeah. they're discriminating it's not good and also <laughs> it's a thing is like that's also unlike just kind of it also has a the very similar trait of australia oh that yeah because like, like you know how they were the what do you call that? Australian English. They literally just put that there. They banished uh, their, um, the prisoners. The prisoners. Of, the, all the criminals are in... In Australia. Hey, but, but Australia is in No longer. Yeah, Australia, you criminals. <laughs> Yo, Australia. It's not anymore. That Australian's like, accent, I like it. Any Australians out there, I like your accent. <laughs> but, uh... I want to go to I was joking with Australians. I want to visit Australia someday. Hook me up. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's like that was a long time ago. So obviously now that the people become normal, like, they're not permanent now. Yeah, they're just people. Yeah, it's just a thing like that. And unlike the unlike Australia, the the fonts weren't permanent. They were just yeah, they were just they just wanted quality. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the end of these this video. So I guess if you like the if you like the video, press the like button, subscribe if you want to watch more videos, comment for if you want us to react to anything that we can, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Yeah.